All right, next quest, we got two more to go. Talk to daddy and continue on. Misguided few. Though visibly relieved, the guardians are safe. The hardness in Fortunal's eyes suggests your work is far from over. With the guardians' heart at ease, the likelihood of others turning has greatly diminished. That said, it is no cause for us to grow complacent. We must need to find a way to overcome the blasphemy's protective warding. If I understand correctly, a blasphemy's behavior is oftentimes influenced by the memories and emotions of their originator, in which case, it would be prudent to learn more of the man who birthed this monstrosity. How fortuitous, then, that a number of soldiers from the Third Legion are in our custody. For a mercy, their tempering was not so severe as to be beyond our ability to heal them. They are presently being treated at Camp Brokeglass. Perhaps the camp's intelligence officer can tell us who among them knows aught of Nerva's whereabouts. Okay. Let's head back to Camp of Broken Glass. Let's see if we can learn a little bit more about Nerva, because that was like 1.0 lore, right? Not sure. Okay. It's over here. No, in the building? Yeah, yeah, right here. All right, Mr. Intelligence Officer, what do you have for us? I see. Perhaps it would be best if you speak with Virgil Virgilia, the Gatiss of the Third Legion. She's still on the mend, but the church surgeon I can never say this right. Chirurgeons aren't like to oppose a brief conversation. If you would wait here for a moment. So why can't we go to her? She's still wearing her full armor and everything. That doesn't really make sense, but okay. Haven't we seen this model before? A Yorgia's champion, I presume. And one of her cohorts. What business have you with me? I like the makeup choice. Isabard is faced with an imminent crisis, and we believe the knowledge you may bear may be the key to stopping it. Thus do we believe the blasphemy to be Nerva. His whereabouts in the wake of Garlemald's fall, or lack thereof, give credence to our theory. Lord Nerva? From what we have pieced together thus far, you were one of the last to see him alive. Please, will you not share with us what you know? Very well. Though I suspect what meager knowledge I possess shall avail you not. I last spoke with Lord Nerva shortly after warring with the First Legion began. Cloistered within the lo lower levels of the Senelcum -Cum Imperials, he spent the bitter part of the day listening attentively to the radio. He seemed hopeful, or perhaps desperate, for news that the tide might turn in our favor. The next day, I left for the front line. It was there I heard the terrible noise, which I assume came from the Tower of Babel. Then darkness took me, and I remember not after that. I was told the radios protected those close to them from the effects of the tower, in which case Lord Nerva would have remained unaffected. But he has ever been devoted to Garlemald, for glory everlasting, he would say. To watch the empire he loved so dearly crumble, I can think of no who would have been most stricken by the sight. It would seem we were right to assume what became of Nerva. 
And it does not surprise me that the beast would choose to make its nest within the Tower of Babel. It stands atop the remains of the Imperial Palace and the throne he revered so highly. But the Empire is no more, and Lord Nerva, apparently, is no longer the man he once was. He deserves to be laid to rest, together with his dreams of glory. We will fail the beast, you have my word. Dot dot dot. Ah, oh, Seed Seer's here. Apologies for the interruption. Kane Sena has arrived, and we're ready to depart. Tis good to see you, Berlian. Master Forshnald. That's right, she met him before. I've spoken with the Lorenz of the ward protecting the blasphemy, and I'm quite confident some manner of aether-based magic bars our path. If I may be so bold, Elder Seedseer, we reached the same conclusion initially, but that simply is not possible. These creatures born of the final days are devoid of aether. As such, they would be unable to produce such a barrier in manner of which we are were accustomed. Do you suppose it is possible they manipulated dynamis to achieve a similar effect? I don't know. I'm not a dynamis expert, I'm an aether expert. I too thought to dismiss the notion of a barrier fueled by ether. That is, until I stepped foot here in Garlemald. Even now, I can sense a stream of ether flowing toward the tower. Ah, okay. That's right, the tower was absorbing a bunch of ether from the land and stuff. Its purpose, after all, to harvest reserves of energy sufficient to reach the moon. Even if one is incapable of manipulating aether directly, it stands to reason control of the tower would alleviate such a need. It's merely conjecture, of course. I cannot say for certain until I have examined the currents with my own eyes. Might I ask you to accompany us? I would join you as well, if I may. My injuries would keep me from being use in battle, but my knowledge of the land should serve just as well as my blade. I would not be opposed to your company, but it is not my decision to make. She may go, so long as she remains under the watch by you and the others. Interesting that I don't have Fordola wearing her collar anymore. Very good. I suggest we begin with Rego um, Urbanissima. I sense the greatest confluence of ether in that vicinity. Oh, there's the person again. Hopefully they don't cause any problems. All right, where are we going? Over there? Okay, let's fly on over. All right, there's everyone. Of course, I gotta talk to everyone now. I like this dress, and I really like her makeup, the way that they did her makeup with the purple eyes. It would seem I underestimated the resourcefulness of our adversary. I had a word that Aldine should be serving before arriving before long. I could already picture him knocking his knees, muttering under his breath about the cold. Pippin? I think that's who she means. I will never understand how you could grow accustomed to such cold climbs. I mean, maybe if you wore a different outfit, you would be able to. Part of me does not wish to believe this blasphemy is Lord Nerva, that I failed to protect him. And yet... I'm sure it's just my imagination, but I can't help but feel we're being watched again. Oh, don't worry, that's just, that's just me. And all the viewers. As I thought, the Aether Stream here flows toward the tower, as do all the others in this region, no doubt.
This convergence first began with the Telephoroi erected spires in all corners of Eorzea to fuel the Tower of Babel. But once destroyed, this divergence of Aether should have ceased. Alright, whoever you are, if you're business with us, quit, quit your sulking about in the shadows and speak your peace. Was you there in the tower, wasn't it? Oh, okay, he actually noticed the person now. Um, you, Gary, and them are gonna, and Fordola are gonna get him. I don't think you want to go up again. Uh, okay, I was right. This is Nero. My, my! You're sharper than you look! I thought it was Nero. I recognize you. Nero, yes? Why are you following us? Who said I'm following you? Being a native of Garlemald, it does not stand to reason I might be inclined to come and see what has become of my home. I know not what you're scheming, but we've got no time to entertain your games. Perhaps Master Garland would be make better company for you. Yeah, why, why, why are you leaving your boyfriend? Spare me. I am a man of great ambition and greater intellect, far beyond the scope of anything Garland could hope to achieve. He still keeps his head in the clouds, while I would set my sights up to the stars beyond. Which is why you snuck into the tower, but like us, you couldn't get past the blasphemy to reach the transporter. Yes, well, I was very much hoping you would dispense with that little obstacle. And having caught wind of your plans, curiosity compelled me to see if you were truly up to the task. I need to do a different voice for him. I'm not liking this one. Do you have reason to believe we were not? Or perhaps does the great genius Nero mean to dispense with the blasphemy himself? <laughs> that grin. Far be it from me to steal your glory, having come all this way. But as I am feeling generous, I will tell you what I learned during my time in the Tower of Babel. I was able to access its systems, you see, and discovered one of those dreadful spires still appears to be active? Impossible! It all vanished when Anima was destroyed. Yes, and I've heard of, of your escapades reclaiming the remains of the Emperor, but obviously you failed to reclaim your entire body. As it stands, a piece remains powering a tower in Etifabrica. Where is that again? Ah, oh, yes, the manufacturing district just north of the erstwhile Imperial Palace. You know, where we can't get to. Conveniently off the map. A rather impressive feat, considering how these lands are so utterly devoid of ether, barely enough to sustain life, let alone the spire. But if one were to use Varus's remains to forcefully create a confluence of sorts. Precisely. And for what I gleaned of the tower systems, his heart serves as its core. Coursing not with blood, but your precious ether, and now Nerva has amassed a sure fit to shore up his defenses. Now fortuitous, he should find a so perfect an impetus for his design, stolen from the hands and minds than his own, a very like him. Oh. Did I say that aloud? You'll forgive me if I fail to show concern for your ire. Nero. If what you say is true, these lands could never hope to recover from such a paucity of life energies. We must hurry and find Varus' heart, to both spare the land of this wanton harvesting and deny the blasphemy of the source of its protection. Are we to presume you have any intention of aiding us? As I said, I have no intention of stealing your glory, though I fear victory may soon slip through your fingers if you do not act quickly. The Tower of Babel was designed specifically for Anima to serve as its core. Nerva forcing himself upon the system has caused it to grow increasingly unstable. If my calculations are correct, and they always are, it will not be long before his presence triggers a system meltdown. The resulting explosion would 
destroy whatever tenuous streams of aether breathe life into the lands of Garlemald. Well, that's not good. But more importantly, we will lose our only means of reaching the moon, the heavens forever denied my, my genius. Oh no. How very unfortunate. In any event, it would seem time is of the essence. That's all well and good, but even if we know which district to search, finding the heart will be like looking for a needle in a bloody haystack. Actually, I may know where we can start. Of course she does. It's all rather hazy, but I still have the vague recollection of my time serving Anima when I was enthralled. We were commanded to erect the same manner of facility tucked away in the corner of Fabrica. I remember not what it was for, but it's good a good place to start as any to begin our search. Certainly sounds promising, but surely this facility will be heavily guarded. Well, that's why I'm here for. Then maybe it'd be best to divide our forces. If it's just the four of us, shouldn't prove too difficult to sneak inside and find the heart. Why sneak around when you can just kill everything? Yes, yes, let the anger flow through you. Meanwhile, our main force can stand ready to storm the Tower of Babel when the barrier gives out. Ah, so we're going to be part of the storming group. Because they didn't want to do any sort of modeling or mapping for the uh, other area. Yeah, have those four go do the stealth mission. And then we'll do the storming of the castle. This is the Vier. What? Very well. We shall return at once. That doesn't sound good. A number of Garleans have left camp for the Tower of Babel. Uh-oh. They have somehow misunderstood the threat of the tower, and convinced themselves that Nerva has taken a refuge there, still clinging to their ill-placed patriotism, no doubt. They could not have gone far. If we act quickly, perhaps they can be found before they come to harm. A wise man would not waste his time on only a few wayward refugees. I thought you Charlie and scholars knew better. Yeah, that's true. It seems like the kind of thing they would be like... Well, this saves five people, this saves five million people. To ignore the plight of others might entirely save not wisdom, sir. Yes, yes, yes. If that is all the same to you, Perlian, I would join you. Can you fight? I mean, she can heal. I will return to camp and begin preparations for our assault on the tower. Nero can probably DPS a little bit. Oh well, yeah, he showed that he could fight. Ah, <sighs> I suppose I should go as well. All right, Daddy. Though I am uh, unarmed, I promise not to be a burden. Oh, sure, Fortunald. That said, it would behoove us to avoid any undue confrontations if possible. Now then, let us be off. Fortunal is not accompanying you? Oh no. How do I get him to leave? This is the first character where I accompany us where I'd be like, eh. Anyway, let's just fly over here and check out this point of interest. Hmm, no trace of them here. Let us keep searching. Okay, let's keep going. Another point of interest. Help! Someone, please! Did you hear that? It came from over there. Over there? You know, just going and running off. Great idea, Fortunald. Alright, looks like it's right here. Yep, a purple circle of death. Let's take him down.
Uh, that was uh, a little bit overkill, but okay. Let's come on and slam. I'll never get tired of that animation. Okay, let's talk to Fortune Old first. Oh, of course I'm paralyzed. Okay, guess we gotta wait 20 seconds. Okay, there we go. They are understandably shaken, but otherwise appear to be unharmed. Well, that's good. Oh, right, these were the ones that were not too happy about the decision. You, you're the ones who came to speak with us before. We heard Lord Nerva had returned and was assembling his forces in the tower, but that's not what happened. That's not what's happening, bro. No, not Lord Nerva, too. Then there really is nothing left for us. Yes, there is. I'll not deny your situation is dire. But you are not without a path forward. I believe you have the passion and conviction needed to rebuild Garlemald, if you so choose. Or, failing that, you can be a life new in Charlian. Rebuild Garlemald? No, there is no point in entertaining so lofty a dream. And we would sooner die than suffer life under the rule of another. Again, it's not rule, bro. You would sooner seek death than sanctuary. Your resolve is admirable, but sorely misplaced. If you would not see Garlemald rise from the snow and ashes here in Ilsebard, might you consider venturing onto a new frontier? That's not a bad idea. A new frontier? And where exactly is this life ripe for exploration? Why, everywhere, dude. There, on the moon. Oh. Right. We can just get them to get them to manage the knowledge and stuff. I mean, I'm sure the Loperts will be happy, but is our goal to create a repository of man's knowledge there, free from the jurisdiction of any nation? As I understand, the magic and te technological advancements of Garlemald were without peer. Your expertise would be indispensable in this ende in the endeavor, should you be willing, of course. That's not a bad idea. Do you really expect us to go and live on the bloody moon? Is such a thing even possible? Well, yeah. Have you a better alternative? Lest you forget, Garlemald did not rise to grandeur from complacency in the present or rumination in the past. We live for the future, and it is in our blood. Life is not without its hardships, of course. Even I have met with the occasional stumbling block, you know, because Nero's perfect. But even should I stumble, my eyes are forever fixed skyward, seeking ever greater heights. The Empire may be lost, but I still possess a great deal of knowledge gained from it, and a desire to seek more. The very notion of exploring the moon is an unprecedented prospect and that you would balk at the proposition boggles the mind. Oh, Nero. Consider this. You have heard the beasts of the final days were born of those hapless souls that had given up on everything, yes? If that is indeed the case, can you tell me why you still stand before me? Because you haven't actually given up. Because deep down, you believe your life is yet worth living. Deep down, you long to reach for the unreachable. Interesting. Nero given a pretty good speech. Or perhaps you don't. If you should choose to lay down and die here in the snow, it's not none of my concern. Reach for the unreachable? That sounds like something I would have said back at the academy. All right, we'll go. I suppose it's better than dying here in the snow, as you so grimly put it. Then we must first dispense of the blasphemy that commands the tower.
It's hard to believe Lord Nerva, of all people, could be turned into one of those monsters. Please, you must stop him. Put his soul to rest. Thank you, and sorry for call causing all this trouble. You're not welcome. Please don't do it again. Thank you for the arousing call to action, but I thought you had no interest in meddling in our affairs. He wants to go to the moon, doesn't he? Lest you misunderstand, I abhor the idea of my countrymen blindly following nobles they know next to nothing about. Besides, it would be a most piteous sight for not a single Garlean to be among those venturing to the moon. <laughs> Who else am I to prevail upon to learn of new findings up there? <laughs> oh, that was funny. Go ahead and pick, uh... I th how many do I have of each of these? Uh, okay, I've got seven of those and six of those. I think I'm gonna go for skill speed. 